Hello everyone and welcome. I am Clementine Inat Svetanov, author of the blog Muscular Dystrophy No More on how I improve the health and lifestyle of my son using three simple and natural methods. Today I have the pleasure to interview Todd Harrison, coach and founder of Beat Muscular Dystrophy program. Todd has been a tremendous inspiration in my journey of healing my son from muscular dystrophy. I still remember how I felt the first time I watched a video of Todd Harrison performance. I was staying overnight in the hospital with my son Gabrielian. He had another virus due to his weak immune system and as he finally filed to sleep after many hours of complaints, I found an email of my friend Mark asking me to watch some videos. Those videos were YouTube videos of Todd Harrison's physical performance. And I couldn't believe that what I was watching. He was able to go up and down the stairs with ease, lifting weights, walking, moving with grace. I felt so much hope and relief. That night, I knew that Gabriel can be cured. So I will just go through an introduction of Todd Harrison's story. So Todd Harrison, 30 years old, was diagnosed with Becker muscular dystrophy at the age of three. The disease has been seen for three generations in his family, having a grand uncle who passed away in 1996 and an uncle more recently in 2013. Todd knew what was coming to him growing up, but he always had the outlook that he would not end up in a wheelchair. In 2010, Todd's family started a non-profitable organization called Defying Muscular Dystrophy. Later, he founded one FDA-approved clinical trial for electric stimulation machine called Vector. Then in 2013, he discovered from a naturopathic physician that muscular dystrophy in animals was shown to be cured by supplementation of the mineral selenium in 1958. After hearing this fact, Todd started a long search on the internet with Alship website, which had historic newspaper article and information that could not be found anywhere else. The information that he discovered verified one thing. Muscular dystrophy is simply a nutritional deficiency disease. Todd Harrison's mission today is to help and educate the masses of people affected by muscular dystrophy. So hello, Todd, and welcome. Thank you for accepting and taking the time for this interview. Yeah, it's great to be on here, Clementine. So I described briefly your story. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how was your life as a boy with muscular dystrophy and what was the turning point? Yeah, so my outlook with muscular dystrophy is probably different than most people because growing up I had, like you mentioned, my great uncle and uncle, I saw them go through their weaknesses. So I kind of had it in my mind that I could end up like them, but as a young child, I always had what I would call a, almost like a defiant attitude where, you know, I'm not going to accept what's going to happen to my uncles or I'm not going to accept what the doctors are going to say. So, you know, I think having that mindset, I was like, that's not going to happen to me. And as I got older, I discovered some great information that you mentioned, like suppressed newspaper articles. And that's how I really started my research journey. So can you tell us exactly what did you find out? What is the myth about muscular dystrophy? Well, my research journey started back actually in January of 2013. Somebody had sent me a message on my YouTube channel saying, hey, check this out. This doctor is talking about how muscular dystrophy was cured in animals over 60 years ago. So I was a little skeptical at first, but the way I am, I always make sure to do my research and then make my judgment after that. But I remember it didn't take me long to basically verify that, yes, muscular dystrophy was discovered to be cured in uh, 1957 and then also 1958. And once I saw that, I was like, okay, this was over 60 years ago. There's got to be, you know, some more pieces of information just like this. And sure enough, you know, I mentioned in my previous videos that I've gone through over at least 100,000 newspaper articles. And these articles are not on Google. So I basically uncovered more promising treatments and actual cures, but the big organizations like the Muscular Dystrophy Association, they never jumped up and said, hey, let's start doing some human studies because we already cured this disease in animals. So that kind of angered me a little bit and gave me a big drive to try to help as many people as possible. And can you explain us a little bit more about what is the link between muscular dystrophy and nutritional deficiency? Yeah, actually, so what the medical community doesn't tell us is the word dystrophy actually means bad nutrition. If you look back in Greek roots or Sanskrit languages, the term dys means bad and trophy means nutrition. And so you combine muscular dystrophy, you have the definition of muscular bad nutrition. And there was a doctor in like 1962, his name was Dr. Roger J. Williams, and he had a little seminar with the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And I was like, look, from root war derivation, muscular dystrophy simply means muscles with bad nutrition. And he told the Muscular Dystrophy Association, look, let's 
stop pushing for drugs and let's look for a search of nutrients or a combination of them that could potentially cure muscular dystrophy in. He was most likely laughed at back then. So that's how the link, and then of course the newspaper articles verify that all these nutrients have extremely promising benefits for humans. What is about the selenium? What is so important about the selenium in muscular dystrophy? So uh, selenium is an essential mineral. It holds your DNA together, basically is the protector of your DNA. Because if you don't have enough selenium in your body, your body won't make an enzyme called glutathione peroxidase. And glutathione peroxidase, if you don't have enough selenium in your body, this enzyme is not going to be created. And that's in turn going to leave your DNA open for plenty of damage. So without that glutathione peroxidase enzyme, your DNA is going to crumble apart. And that's where they say the muscular dystrophy is genetic, but they're actually not looking into what's causing the DNA chromosomes to break down. So selenium will be the one who triggered DNA damage, actually. Yeah, actually, a Dr. Bruce Ames, he did a clinical study showing that if you have a deficiency of selenium, that DNA damage will actually happen. And it's not just selenium. There was a couple other minerals like copper, chromium, wide spectrum of them. And so what's happened? Why are they missing selenium, these kids? So a selenium deficiency occurs when the food you eat is not grown in selenium-enriched soil. So say if somebody could eat an extremely healthy organic diet, but if those foods are not grown in soil where selenium actually is, you're going to be eating selenium deficient foods. And that in turn creates selenium deficient humans. So once that you have found out this cure, was there some obstacles in this process of recovery? What advices could you give to those families about what to do, what to avoid? Well, from my experience, the younger a person is and the less severe the muscle damage has been, the better chance they have at a full recovery. Like uh, for me, when I discovered all this information, I had gone through at least, I'd say, 15, 16 years of muscle damage. And, you know, there's no way that I'm going to be able to fix that in a year or two years or even three years. So it's uh, really important that parents, that once they discover this information, that they act quick, give their kid the nutrients they need, and definitely record progress of improvements. So you have started also your journey with a clinical trial with the Vecto machine. Can you tell us a little bit more about your experience and how did you decide to try this machine actually without proven tests and what were the end results of this? So uh, I discovered the Vector treatment in 2010, so uh, like three years before I even knew anything about nutrition. And the same thing kind of happened. I was just browsing on YouTube videos for muscular dystrophy, seeing what was out there. And I came across this video of a 15-year-old with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and he was actually still walking while using this treatment. So I'm like, you know, at 15 years old, I don't ever see kids with Duchenne muscular dystrophy walking. So that instantly caught my eye. From what I remember, I saw the kid, he had improved his walking gait after like six months. And I was like, you know what, I got to try this. So I basically scheduled an appointment. My family raised about $15,000 to get the treatment for me and my uncle. And what Vector is, it was electric stimulation machine, but it didn't focus on stimulating muscles like a TENS machine. Instead, it would focus on stimulating your nerves to create more oxygen flow, better blood flow, stuff like that. And when I took that treatment, after about two days, I noticed I was able to stand on one leg a little bit better. And I also had a little bit more power getting up from a seated position. So I noticed the improvements pretty quick with Vector. So... Today you're working now in collaboration with Dr. Wallach, the founder of Yongevity Supplements. What one Yongevity have brought into your life? What is the plus of Yongevity Supplements? Well, I'd say the one main plus Yongevity has given me is a peace of mind because I no longer need to worry about whether or not the so-called muscular dystrophy experts discover a cure that comes from an overpriced patented drug. And having a peace of mind with this disease is essential because, first of all, it eliminates stress, fear, and worry about the future. So there is a reason why I have been involved in being an official spokesman for muscular dystrophy, and that reason being is it would be selfish to keep this information to myself. But yes, the plus of longevity goes beyond just optimal supplement recommendation. Longevity and Dr. Wallach helped me bridge the gap of information that I was missing that I needed to gain that peace of mind, which would eliminate the stress fear and worry. And another plus that longevity has given me is physical improvements. I mean, since I've started the supplements over five years ago, my energy is better, my strength is better, and my quality of life is just that much better. 
So, but what is the plus of uh, the longevity supplements? You're talking sometime in the videos about the absorption, how they can absorb more quickly than all the supplements. Yes, yes, that's another thing. So, longevity, what they teach people to do is, you know, you just don't want to go to the store and take a bottle of selenium or an isolated form of vitamin D. So longevity's formulations basically combine, like let's take for example, they have a supplement called Ultimate Selenium. They take selenium, but then they add selenium's cofactors like vitamin E, copper, and chromium. Because uh, without other nutrients on top of selenium, you're not going to have optimal results. So longevity kind of just combines everything and makes sure you have your cofactors for calcium and vitamin D and magnesium, your vitamin Bs, and then of course they throw some whole foods. So uh, longevity is all about the cofactors, dose specific to body weight, things like that. I, I, I remember at the beginning of my journey, I started to give selenium to my son and I was explaining to you that you're having some kind of reaction. Is it something that you have heard before? Uh, with longevity, the only kind of reactions that I've heard of is like detox symptoms. But, you know, out of all the people who've taken selenium with actual cofactors, I haven't heard of any like side effects with that. So if you take an isolated form of selenium, it just depends what form it is because there's over a hundred different types of selenium actually. So that could also explain some differences in people. And can you explain us about the theory of the 90 uh, essential nutrients? Yeah, so Dr. Waller, he actually has a book called Diseases of Exotic Animals. And in that book, he revealed that these assortment of 90 essential nutrients can actually cure and eliminate over 800 diseases in the agriculture industry and animals. But, you know, the problem is that in humans, they haven't been able to do these mass scale human studies with what's been proven to work in animals. So the 90 essential nutrients, Dr. Wallach's research showed definitely over 800 diseases can be eliminated and wiped out. So how did you notice your progress with the supplements? How did that happen? What did you feel? After like two or three days, my first improvement was elimination of my fatigue, followed by I actually got rid of my heartburn completely because uh, before I started the supplements, I would get pretty bad heartburn, couldn't really eat spicy food. And then so first I had energy, then I got rid of my heartburn, then after about two or three weeks, that's when I started noticing a little bit more strength in my legs walking. And that's when I documented video like before and after. So after two or three weeks, I noticed a slight difference that my walking gait had improved. So at that point, I was like, okay, I'm on to something. I'm already seeing differences on video. And today, what are your daily routine? How much do you exercise? Are still taking the same amount of supplements? What do you do every day? I'd say my regular routine is... You know, I'll get up, I'll have my multivitamin called tangy tangerine, and then I always make sure to eat at least four eggs every morning, because eggs, that's the best source of protein I hear, so if you got muscular dystrophy, it's essential to have your protein. And then I'll take my selenium in the morning, and then in the afternoon, I'll have some more of my multivitamin drink, the tangy tangerine. Followed by that, I'll take my essential fatty acid supplements, and then selenium again. So it's not too complicated, just morning and night. And do you still exercise? We saw in your video you're exercising a lot. Right now, I'm not doing like regular exercise, but I'll grab some weights and do some bicep curls or whatever just to get some blood flowing. But I haven't really attempted to work out too hard yet. But that's another point I should touch on. Like my philosophy is if you cure or repair your DNA and you still have that muscle weakness, the way you're going to get your strength back is working out so nothing's gonna ever replace working out so i believe at some point in muscular dystrophy there's gonna be a plateau in strength improvement until that person starts exercising regularly or even doing physical therapy as a coach you have to stay up and what to advise could you give to our listeners like what advice to stay mentally motivated Let's see, with muscular dystrophy, I mean, I've had a lot of adversity, especially with tons of people thinking that my information is fake and all this, or they think I'm some kind of scam, but I just don't let the opinions of others stop me, because for myself, I know what works, and all the naysayers, there's no way that you can keep naysayers from stopping your dream or stopping you from promoting your message. Yeah, you're also listening uh, quite a lot of uh, motivational speakers, so which one is your favorite? Yeah, I listen to a lot of Earl Nightingale. 
he has a lot of, you know, his philosophy is like, what you think, that's what you're going to become. So I keep a lot of positive messages in my mind like that. I mean, I listen to things like Jim Rohn, uh, Les Brown, and I have that thing called Amazon Alexa. So I use that a lot. I'm just like, Alexa, play Earl Nightingale, and I'll have some uh, motivational audios play. So I keep a lot of positivity flowing through. Thank you very much, Todd. This has been tremendous value for our listeners. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. It's been great on here.